said, my name's Johnny and I work in the recruitment team at Lancaster. And I guess you're probably thinking, um, who is this person and um, why should they um, tell me about applying off to university and making these decisions? Um, and as much as I, I feel like, um, I, I guess in some ways, I feel still like a student because I, I, I work at Lancaster um, and I only graduated from Lancaster in, in 2018, which is four years ago now, which is a little bit scary. Um, but what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say I absolutely have my own experiences of being a student. And um, I, I completely relate to the whole process that you're going through now. Uh, you've all got lots of questions uh, and lots of things that you're going to have to, uh, to work through. But that's exactly what we're here for today. So to give you um, a bit of context, really, about Lancaster University, I really hope that you've all had an opportunity to come and, and visit us before. Um, I imagine some of you have already been up to this part of, of the UK, um, to, to the Lake District, to the northwest of England. Um, Lancaster University is a, a campus based university, um, which really does make us um, very, very unique. And um, uh, the vice chancellor was going to um, give a bit of an intro introduction to that in the video as well, um, to kind of give you um, an introduction to what it means to be part of a college based university. Um, but I know that throughout today, we're going to have many more sessions uh, where you'll be able to speak um, and, and chat with our student ambassadors, um, all of which um, uh, belong to, um, you know, a college within our campus and can give you a bit more of a sense of what that's all about. Um, as much as it's an online event today, um, we really do hope that you would like to come visit us at some point. Um, so after today, if you think, you know what, I found that super useful. Um, actually, I'd really like to come and visit Lancaster. We'd really love, love for you to come and visit us. Um, so as I've said, we're in the northwest of England and we're very fortunate to be in such a, a vibrant and beautiful part of the country, really, um, with, with the Lake District um, just to our north um, and then also uh, with the, um, the, York, the Yorkshire Dales as well, you know, over towards the east. Um, and we're very fortunate to have the city of Lancaster, which is, is right in our doorstep. It, I think that Lancaster, um, having, having been a student um, here myself, it, is the perfect student city. Um, it's packed full of so many things to do. Um, and I'm not going to really ruin the surprise for you because you've got many more opportunities to hear about this today. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed my time here. Now, I am going to sound a little bit biased as we're going through the presentations today because, you know, I, I, I still live in Lancaster um, even now. And I also was a student here, but I am very genuine. I'm very honest. I had a fantastic time at Lancaster University. Uh, we're well connected um, to, to the rest of the country as well. So um, we have a pretty much a direct connection to the M6 uh, motorway, which goes past the university, um, also the, uh, the the West Coast main line. So if you want to do a little bit of traveling and um, going around the country, it's so easy to get up into to Scotland, go across to Manchester, about an hour, about um, two and a half hours down to London as well. Um, so if you fancy going to see a, a West End show, um, then we've absolutely got that covered for you. You can do a little bit of traveling. Um, and when you fancy going on holiday, you can get across to Manchester airport. And I don't know about you, but I think we'd all um, quite like to to go on a, on a holiday at some time soon. Um, so what are we going to um, focus on in this, this first session? So it's going to be a, a really, really big um, grand tour, really, of, of everything that you can expect about applying off to university and really um, ticking all of the boxes, so to speak, um, when you're thinking about your university options. So we're going to start with that, um, that really, really important, that key crucial question, which um, I get asked all the time in my role um, when I, I go out to schools to deliver presentations and chat to students like yourselves. Um, I'll, I'll get asked quite quite simply, why university, you know, as a choice? And, um, you know, because there are so many different options out there, um, you know, nowadays, especially compared to when I applied off to university. Um, but why university indeed? And we'll look at that um, and, and go through that and a bit more information. Um, next, we'll think about how you actually um, look at um, choosing a course at university and um, starting to break this down from, you know, why university is an option, but then thinking about, well, out of all of this, which course would I then like to do? Uh, which is no easy feat at all either. You know, I, I think back to my time and there's so much choice out there, um, but we'll give you some advice to help you try and narrow down those options for you. Uh, once we've looked at university and thinking about courses, we'll then think about how you can go about researching um, universities themselves and give you some um, some tools and some tips to, to work through the amount of information um, that you'll have to look through. 
Um, then we'll look at um, open days and, and higher education fairs as examples of ways that you can actually uh, find this information out for yourselves. And the important thing that you all need to know is that you've all done the, the right first step by, by coming here today and, um, and coming here to ask all these questions. So you're all already on, on the right track. I think it's so important that you, you do make the most of today. I know exactly what it's like. Sometimes when you come along to these events, um, there's so much information on 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 hand that you kind of um, lose track of the questions you want to ask so what what i'd say again is as we're going through this presentation start thinking of any questions that you'd like to ask us throughout the day um, we'll introduce um, our student ambassadors again um, towards the end of the session for our q a uh, but it's also just to let you know we will have a, a q a running throughout today um, in the background so even if you are in, in one of these sessions and, and you feel like you want to ask a question to one of our student ambassadors you absolutely can do that as well uh, which brings us um, on to the last part of this this first presentation which is the the student ambassador q a panel so why university um I think university, first and foremost, is an amazing opportunity. And I'm incredibly envious of you all that you, you have this opportunity to um, go through this whole this whole process. Um, the kind of stage that you're all at in your in your, your um, academic life, so to speak, where you're in sixth form, you're probably all in either in year, year 12, maybe some of you in year 13. Um, you've got such an exciting next step ahead and it, I can promise you it will fly by. Um, but going off to university is um, a very, very exciting experience. We've got so much, so many new things coming your way. Um, and you're going to meet so many new people as well, which is one of the things that students love about university, this ability to meet so many new people, have these different experiences. As well as experiences, uh, a lot of people really, really look forward to studying a subject that they're, they're super, super passionate about. And, and, and you absolutely can't understate this um, at all. Um, you know, you're going off to uh, study a degree for what will could be three years at least, maybe longer if you're doing medicine, which is about five years. Um, and it's important that when you're looking at university and your choices, that you pick a subject you're passionate about, that are subjects that will, you know, sustain your interest all the way through your degree. A degree is also fantastic to enhance your future career pathways. Um, employers really value um, students who have degrees um, because they understand what that means. They, they have you know, super critical thinking skills, ability to be organized, to take you know, risks, to be bold. Um, and they know that they've made the most of a university experience. A university experience is so much more than the degree itself. Um, I'm a big believer that when you go off to university, you have 50% study and then 50% everything else you get involved in. And that other 50% also really adds to your time at university, really develops you as an individual as well. Um, and that kind of ties into the extracurricular opportunities, you know, and for some people actually, and we'll look at this in a bit more detail soon, the things they get involved in outside their studies redefine their time at university. Um, and then the last point sounds a bit cheesy, maybe, um, but personal development and growth. I, I think that university really does something um, to, uh, to people, you know, in a really, really positive way, um, you know, through these experiences that you have. And it really does develop you and, and, and you know, build up, builds you as a, an individual and really develops your profile in a personal sense, but also thinking in a professional se sense as well, when you're thinking about applying for jobs uh, in later life after university. So let's go straight into this and think about how you actually um, choose a course whilst you're at university. So where do you actually begin? Um, I think it's super important that you, you think about your, your favourite subject first and foremost. And as we're going through these questions here, um, I don't want you to just listen to me presenting at you, you know, because um, that would probably be very boring. Um, I want you to engage with these questions that you can see on, on the slide right now. So as I'm going through it, please run these questions through in your mind. Um, so the first question is, you know, what's your favourite subject? I think this is so crucial to any course that you're, you're looking at university you know when you're picking your 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 five choices for your courses um you know you've got to make sure you pick something that you that you know you really enjoy and you're passionate about um next point you know what subjects do you excel in you know think about this right now what subjects are you actually doing right now that you do the best at um even better if that's your favorite subject you know because that is a really you know that's a key to success right there finding something that you love and also that you're really really good at um 
also thinking about other things that you enjoy as well. University, as I've said, is, is not just about um, your, your subject. It's about finding the other things, your, your passions, your hobbies that interest you as well. Um, so when you're looking at universities, it's important to see, does a university actually have all of the other things that I'm interested in outside of my studies as well? Uh, the last question, the super scary question, you might say, which is, um, do you have a, a career in mind? Um, if you're anything like me in sixth form, having someone ask you, what do you want to do about your, your career is um, a very, very scary question. And understandably so, you know, big thinking, you know, thinking about the future. Um, but what I want you to do is think about careers, not in that kind of scary sense, but in a really positive sense, you know. Um, and if you do have a, a, a degree course that, that will connect to this, that's amazing, um, you know. But like most people, you probably don't have that. And that's fine because I think this time in your life, and especially university, it is all about working this out and, and figuring out a direction that you want to go in. But if you don't have a career plan right now, that's completely fine. And there is so much choice out there. Um, over 390 higher education institutions offering a degree um, a program um, with 50,000 courses um, available for you to actually look at. Um, so how do you even begin going through this? Well, you can start narrowing this down to ultimately five choices um, using all of the, um, you know, the tips I've just mentioned, such as what do you enjoy, what's your favourite subject, what, you what are you really good at? Um, but as we go through this presentation and as our student ambassadors offer their advice as well, we'll, we'll give you loads of top tips to actually start working through the, the really high number of, of choices that you have out there. Um, but as much as this might seem a little bit dazzling, um, I, I think this is, you know, should be seen the opposite way. I think it's amazing that you have so much choice. Um, you know, and, and, and really do your research as early as you can to try and work, work through the amount of options that you have. So types of courses, um, the types of courses you can you can choose to study at university uh, come in four main types, really. Uh, the first one, uh, they're traditional courses, which I'm absolutely sure you've all heard about, um, such as English, such as maths, history, sciences, geography, art. But then you'll also have at university courses which are, are unavailable at sixth form. Um, such as accounting, medicine, linguistics, ecology and conservation as well. And um, these kind of courses are, are the ones which um, are typically unavailable to study um, at sixth form and require you to combine a number of interests once you get to university. For example, medicine would combine numerous different sciences um, together into one subject. Other kind of courses would be um, combined subjects. Now, I think combined subjects provide you um, a fantastic opportunity to pursue multiple interests. One of the, the, the most commonly asked questions that I, I find from speaking to students is, I'm not really sure about which subject I want to study, and that's completely fine. A very easy way to navigate that, that dilemma, um, especially if you're deciding between two subjects, is to do um, combined subjects at university. For example, politics and economics, management and languages, and criminology and psychology. Criminology and psychology is super popular at the moment, which I think is probably down to the amount of Netflix um, documentaries there are uh, out there. We, we also have specialised subjects as well at university. Um, these ones tend to be a little bit more niche, um, such as lighting design, ethical hacking, management and pollution science. And you tend to find specialised subjects um, are, are aimed more towards a specific kind of career pathway at the end. Um, but hopefully, as I've gone through the different types of courses there, that's sparked your imagination a little bit. Uh, and if anything, especially with combined subjects, it's made you aware of, of pathways that you might not have been aware of before. Um, degree flexibility. So um, thinking about Lancaster, actually, quite specifically, um, this is something which um, I really enjoyed about Lancaster, and I'm sure the student ambassadors will be able to add to this later. Um, at Lancaster, we do offer um, a very flexible um, degree uh, pathway. So in your first year, you, you study a major subject, but then it can also study minor subjects at the same time. So this means that you can dip in and out of different subjects and kind of build a more overall um, or a more well-rounded um, first year experience. It is dependent on your course and which faculty that you actually join, um, but it's a good way to actually enrich your university experience. Um, I did history with politics, for example, um, even though history was my major, and I continued history throughout my degree. Um, I found it really beneficial to actually study politics in my first year, especially with essay writing and understanding arguments. But other examples would include criminology with law, biology with psychology, Spanish studies with computing and German studies and theatre. 
Entry requirements. So it might not sound like the most interesting thing you'll ever hear uh, when you're applying to university, but it is super, super important that you are aware of the, the requirements that you'll be required to, to get to actually um, receive an offer for your course and ultimately go, go on to study at a university. Um, questions to think about include, does the university accept um, UCAS tariff points? Um, and also what kind of qualifications do they do they actually accept? Never assume that all universities will accept the same qualifications qualifications because that's that's not really how um, the, the process works when you apply through UCAS. Um, every university might have slightly different criteria. Uh, for example, some universities might require you to actually have an interview as part of the process. Uh, typically subjects like medicine will require this. And if you're applying to some universities like Oxford, Cambridge, um, they will absolutely require you to have a, a, an interview as part of that whole application process. Um, there might be specific qualifications that are needed as well. For example, specific sciences, specific maths or English grades um, at A level and GCSE or, or either really. Um, and also, you know, it's always worth bearing in mind, does a university accept research? Um, all this information can be found on a university's website. So don't worry about and getting all this information down straight away and um, everything that we're going through, um, you know, you can find this information on the website um, in a lot more detail through the admissions pages. Now, if there was one thing that I could absolutely do different from my time um, at university, it would be um, completing a study abroad programme um, where you get the opportunity to, to travel for, it for a year, a term, or maybe just a couple of weeks as part of your course. So when you're all looking at your university options and your places, um, even at this, this early stage, really, just see if you can get a study abroad year or a study abroad course. Now, when you're looking through UCAS and you're looking through prospectuses, um, you'll usually find that you'll have the course with study abroad in brackets next to it, or maybe a symbol um, like we do in our prospectus, which is an airplane. That'll show you that you can do a study abroad variant. Now, you can do um, a year abroad, but then you can also have other options to do um, a summer exchange programme. Uh, but typically what, what you'll do um, and during study abroad is study at a partner institution that that university is connected to. So I know for Lancaster, we have students who go out to Australia, North America, Europe and Asia as well. And students who go out there have a fantastic time. Um, if anything, we're all just jealous because they, they send us their hol holiday photos. Um, and um, it, it's a fantastic opportunity, which um, employers really, really value as well, uh, because it shows that you're willing to take a bit of a risk to move to another country, which is a huge step. Um, but also it's super, super fun. So if you're thinking about study abroad, please do look into this. And if you haven't actually come across this before, um, equally, I'd really encourage you to, to do a bit more research to see if this is something that you can actually do. Uh, work experience placements and internships. So um, getting a degree and getting a degree qualification is all about maximising the time that you really have at university. Um, it'll be about three years, maybe more, but I can promise you from my own experiences that this time disappears so quickly in a flash. So it's all about packing your degree, uh, you know, your, your experiences full of all of these kind of placements and internships. So, you know, find out if you can do a placement year as part of your course similar to study abroad you'll tend to find in a prospectus that or on the website that it'll have the course title then with placement year um, next to it so you can see that that's an option um, ask questions to departments you know and, and admissions teams to find out what kind of support is available for you whilst you're there uh, what kind of career support might be um, you know available you know to get you to, ready for that placement, but also generally as well. I know, um, for instance, that our management school has a very, very um, dedicated careers team, as well as our um, wider university careers team at the, at the university. Uh, but within our management school, you know, they have their, their own a lifetime's worth of experience that they can draw on from working in, in the management sector. And they, they pass on this information to our students. Um, and we also do different sessions such as drop-ins um, and also uh, employer uh, meet and greet and networking sessions as well. Try and see if there are other further accreditations um, with, with your uh, um, applications, with different degrees you're looking at. Uh, for example, at Lancaster, we have the Lancaster Award, uh, which in a sense works similar to the Duke of Edinburgh Award, but without the expedition, which you might be relieved to hear. Um, but the Lancaster Award um, is a great opportunity to add volunteering experience, work experience, and to really, again, help build your profile whilst you're studying at Lancaster. Um, but do look at, you know, when you're looking at other universities, see if this is an opportunity for you as well. The next question that I probably get asked all the time is, you know, what can I actually do with a degree in a certain subject? And 
you know, it's sometimes quite a difficult um, question to answer because having a degree, you know, full stop opens so many doors for you. Um, but what I'm trying to show here really on, on, on this slide is that just because you have a degree in a certain subject doesn't necessarily mean that you have to then go on and study and, and continue in this field um, after after university. Um, you actually find that you, the world is your oyster, so to speak. So I'm going to pick on history um, because I studied history at, at Lancaster. Um, but you can see that even if you do history, you can go on to actually do law, do a law conversion course later. It's actually incredibly common for students to go into finance after history. Uh, maybe not for myself because I'm absolutely useless at maths uh, and I'm not sure if I could trust myself to look after someone else's finances. Um, but you could also go into IT management, computing. Um, and that's a similar story really across the other kind of degree programs that you can see um, on, on this screen. Um, for example, geography going into journalism, um, art at the very top going to television, um, web, web page design, or even tourism as well. So what I'm trying to say here is that there is so much value in having a degree full stop, which employers really recognize. And it's because it gives you so many transferable skills, such as research independence, you know, be, being able to actually go away um, and work independently and come back with a finished product to a high standards, uh, which is why uh, employers really value university experience. So researching universities, we've had a look at um, how to narrow down your course. Uh, but the next step after this, when you're looking at the whole application process, um, is thinking about researching universities. Um, I've mentioned um, UCAS a few times before, and UCAS is the centralised application system that you'll all become very, very familiar with shortly, I have no doubt. Um, but you've got plenty of time to find out about this. But essentially, UCAS and um, if anything, just having a quick search on the Internet is this the best place to start. Um, but when you are researching universities, um, these are probably a few key things to think about before you actually get to that stage. Um, First question for you is, do you want to stay close or do you actually want to to move away um, from home when you're looking at your university choices? Um, I used to ask this question a few years back in, in schools, in colleges and sixth forms. And um, you would find that actually um, a number of people wanted to stay quite close to home. Um, but since um, the past few years have happened and, um, you know, we, we, we've had uh, the pandemic, um, a lot more people want to actually move away now, which is an interesting shift. Um, some people really do thrive in moving away from home. And if that's absolutely what you want to do, then go for it. You know, I think it's really important that if you want to get that step away, that you go for it. But then some people equally prefer to have family, prefer to have friends close by. Uh, depending on where you're living as well, you have to think about location, uh, living costs. For example, living in the north of England is typically seen as being more affordable as living in, in the south of England. Um, but remember, and this is a really important point I want you to kind of carry with you for the rest of today and for the rest of the time you're looking at university and that there is there's no right or there's no wrong way to actually do university. Um, there's only the way that you do university in a sense. There's only your way of doing this. There's so much pressure really put on put on you as, as as young individuals looking at university. And I think sometimes you've got to be um, a bit kind to yourself, you know, and don't don't get too daunted by this whole process. Um, so remember, there's no right or wrong way to do university, but you know, make sure you, you do it in the way that you know you're going to enjoy the most. So once you've thought about whether you want to stay close to home or you want to actually move a bit further away, um, the next kind of question that I would say will probably come to mind is whether you want to live at a campus based university, which is um, like Lancaster. So at Lancaster, we uh, we have our, our, our campus, which offers a very, very unique um, student experience, which you'll find so much more about um, for the rest of today. So I'm not going to steal the thunder of our student ambassadors. You can tell you about this in, in a lot more detail, uh, but essentially having a campus based university means you have everything self-contained um, right on your doorstep and, and it's very much student orientated it feels like a, a student community if you will um, almost self-sustaining um, when I think back to when I uh, went to my first visits to university and I remember going to going to a number of them uh, I remember coming to Lancaster and something which struck me instantly from the point I got onto campus um, came up the main road which you can see on the picture there on the right uh, corner of the screen was just this feeling of um, community which um, really really actually I really enjoyed um, when I applied off to university I was one of the first people in my you know 
family really to kind of look at this as an option. So it was a bit scary in some ways, um, but I felt really comforted by the campus environment, knowing that it felt very safe um, and that everyone was super friendly as well. And the convenience and the proximity to your, your lecture theatres, your seminar rooms, um, just makes the whole experience super accessible. Um, and I think campus universities really do offer something quite unique compared to um, universities which don't have a campus kind of environment. Um, examples of which including Lancaster University, Loughborough, University of Exeter, York University as well. The other type of university which you'll be considering are, are city universities. And again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, you've just got to understand which one is right for you. Um, city based universities offer a very, very different experience in some ways because uh, you have um, maybe you're closer to uh, amenities and services. Um, and that you'll have um, maybe, you know, different things really at your doorstep. Um, it can be useful for having, uh, you know, a bit more of a work-life balance as well. Um, and some people prefer to have the, the buzz of a big city. I think there is generally something that big cities give you, which only they can, you know, especially Manchester and London. And if you're after that kind of experience, then absolutely that's where you go. Um, I've added Lancaster as well, because we do have the city of Lancaster right in our doorstep. So um, you might actually be able to get the best of both worlds, which is what I think Lancaster does. You have this this great campus experience, but then you also have the city experience right down the road as well. Um, so that it's really not quite as um, as black or white as it might seem. Um, and actually, sometimes you can you can kind of get a little bit of both. Um, just some pictures here, really, to um, give you a quick kind of flavour of, of the city of Lancaster. Um, I love Lancaster as, as a place, and um, I think that's, that's shown by the fact I'm still here. Um, it must be doing something right um, as a city, and, and I really do enjoy it. Um, at university, I was super involved in music, and I, I love the live music scene in Lancaster. I'm also a huge coffee person as well, and I think we have a fantastic selection of coffee shops, including in uh, Lancaster Castle, which you can see in the bottom corner of the screen, uh, bottom half of the screen there. Now, I'm a history graduate, so I have to talk about a castle for at least a few seconds. Um, but actually, I think having a medieval castle right in the middle of the city is super cool, um, and is a really cool place to go and have an explore. Um, Lancaster as a place I think is great. It's a super, you know, relaxed but vibrant um, city at the same time with open green spaces and also a, a really a great city centre and plenty of things to do during the day and also at night as well. Uh, beyond the city, we are so fortunate to have uh, the Lake District, as I've mentioned before, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and another key message I'm trying to get across to you here is that you know, when you're going off to university, please do explore the region that you've got around you um, because you'll get a greater sense of the place. You know, we're talking about finding your place here. Um, I really think if you do explore the regions around the university, you'll, you'll learn so much and you'll experience so much, you know, other than if you just stayed on campus or if you just stayed around the university itself. Uh, Lancaster University is a, a collegiate university uh, as well as being a campus university um, and I think being a collegiate university and one of a handful of, the, of this kind in, in the country offers um, a an even more unique experience really. Um, so what are colleges? I can, uh, can hear you asking. Uh, colleges are in a sense similar to Harry Potter, that's my go-to um, explanation, in as much as that everyone belongs to a college like everyone would belong to a house. And our colleges are smaller, really diverse communities within the university itself. We have about 15,000 students at Lancaster. And um, I think having a college system is great because it really breaks down um, what is quite a, a large amount of students into a really accessible, um, small, smaller amounts which is great if you're a little bit maybe apprehensive about university or you're a little bit nervous about this jump and seeing loads of people all of a sudden. Having this college environment is great because it gives you the, the smaller community that you identify with. Um, every student at Lancaster belongs to a college. Um, we have we have nine colleges, um, one postgraduate with, with eight undergraduates, and um, everyone is fiercely proud of the colleges that they belong to. Uh, I'm going to ask our student ambassadors which ones they belong to once we get to the Q&A. Um, but I was a member of Fern College, uh, which is ultimately the best college we have at Lancaster. Though I'm a little bit biased and I'm sure our student ambassadors will have something to say about that instantly. Um, within the colleges themselves, they're responsible for really um, organising loads of events that take place across the year, including our extra events, which are our big end of year parties, which usually have some really ridiculous and really daft theme, uh, such as Shrekstrav, which I remember from when I was at Lancaster. We do have uh, intercollegiate sports competitions as well. 
um, and actually something that you, you'll get from Lancaster very, very quickly. Uh, and I know we have a session on this later today is how sporty we are as a university. There's so much you can get involved in and so many ways that we compete against each other and against universities as well. Um, you'll have loads of unique student opportunities and the one that's instantly popped to my mind is that I know last week we had a um, a session where uh, guide dogs came onto campus um, to, to act as maybe a little bit of moral support for our students going through exams and, and what more do you need uh, when you're going through uh, towards the exam season and having um, guide dogs um, coming on campus to, to just help you chill out a little bit more. Um, the colleges are also there to provide welfare, funding support, um, it, should you need it, and they are your, your kind of your, your point of contact at the university if you need any any help. Um, but the colleges provide something which is separate from your studies, and I think that's what's really nice. You get all of this experience from studying a course you enjoy, but then on top of this at Lancaster, you have the college environment, which just adds this whole other really great dimension to your studies. And this really just highlights where all our colleges are, so you can see they're really spread out across campus. Um, and then Furness College is, is really in the middle there, which is the best college, as I've said. Um, but our, we have our rivalries against Cartmel College, um, which is all friendly, I promise. Uh, in terms of the colleges themselves, our biggest one is County College, the smallest also Furness. Uh, they all offer something similar in a way, but also have their unique identities. Um, but I'm going to stop saying too much about the colleges. And if you've got any questions about how this works, um, I'd really recommend getting your questions ready for our student ambassadors. Uh, thinking about how you look at um, the more finer details of choosing a university, um, league tables are a super important way to, to actually work work through this information. And we're not going to look at this too much. We're going to kind of uh, quickly step through this as you've got a lot of time to work through through all this information yourselves after today. Um, but league tables are independent tables such as the Guardian, the Times, the Sunday Times, Complete University Guide, which provide you all the information or most of the information you need to decide which university is the best fit for you. But please make sure that no matter what it is, you use these league tables subjectively as there's no one way to really measure if one university is better than another. Now, rather unashamedly, and obviously um, as I'm uh, presenting and representing Lancaster University, I'm going to show off here. Um, and if anything, I'm super proud of uh, Lancaster University as an institution um, because of its fantastic reputation. I think this says everything you need to know. And when you're looking at universities, you absolutely want to be looking for universities like Lancaster, which are at, you know are performing at the very top of the league tables within this top 20, top 15 area. Um, and some of our subjects at Lancaster are ranked even highly than our university rankings, such as we're third for physics, fourth for biosciences, seventh for chemistry, politics, criminology, art and design, uh, first as well for, for social work. Um, so do have a look on our on our on our website and in our prospectus to find out more information there. Uh, the National Student Survey is also a really really um, important place to look at. Um, which the survey itself is an independent and impartial survey taken by students in the final year, so you know it's honest. And what it looks like it looks at is uh, overall satisfaction with departments and a student's course, such as academic support, teaching assessment, feedback, um, and it will give you a very true idea of how a university is performing. If students are happy, then you absolutely know they're doing something right. Um, in 2000, uh, in 2021, um, we we're really pleased that 83 percent of Lancaster University students were satisfied overall with the quality of their course, which actually does put us and above the national average as well. Clubs and societies, um, again, we won't look at this in too much detail because you've got more time to look at this today, but we have so many at Lancaster, over 175, 80 alone, which are sports teams for a whole variety of different interests, um, such as cultural, linguistic, religious, social, political, and also like uh, musical, um, it, it, if you're interested in, in student media and student radio, we have uh, Bailrig FM, which is the oldest running student radio station, which broadcasts on FM at Lancaster, which is something amazing that we have. Sports teams, I've already really mentioned how sport for choice you are at Lancaster, and this just gives you an idea of, of everything that we do have on offer. Um, but anything from American football to, to Octopush, which is underwater ice hockey, which is crazy to watch. I don't know how they do it. Um, we've absolutely got you, got you covered here when it comes to sports and the amount of things that you can get involved with. Um, from memory, um, I believe, uh, according to Pure Gym, we were voted the most sportiest university in the country alongside Oxford for the, for the number of, of sports teams and types that we offer. 
And it wouldn't be um, a conversation about sports at Lancaster without our Roses uh, tournament, which is the largest inter-university sporting event in Europe, uh, which takes place between Lancaster and York University. And it has its historic rivalry going back 500 years um, to the 15th century. But thankfully, it's a lot more friendly than it used to be. Um, and um, it's an amazing event that comes really brings our campus to life. So, um, again, please do ask about this. Ask our student ambassadors about this. Uh, Really bringing this all together, um, the Student Union um, at Lancaster and at universities in general is the organisation which really looks after all of the things that I've mentioned, such as um, the, the societies and even the yearly elections. So you can get involved in the Student Union, say, run to be president. Um, and they look after uh, numerous things at Lancaster, including our, our student letting agency, uh, which helps students find houses, housing in second and third year. Um, we also have a, um, a supermarket and weekly farmers market that comes on campus, um, as well as our student union owned nightclub, the Sugar House. They also provide volunteering opportunities such as um, work experience in schools, which is great if you want to get teaching experience, as well as offering plenty of student advice and support. Uh, support and well-being is a, a really, really big topic at a university and, and quite rightly so. Um, but. What I've done here is, is put up um, all of the examples of the support and, and maybe not even all actually that we offer at Lancaster from individual uh, advice within our colleges and our college advisor teams to, um, to also um, uh, counselling and mental health services within the colleges. Uh, we also have meditation sessions which take place in our chaplaincy centre. Um, but at Lancaster, we have this huge web of support um, because going off to university is a big step and I know quite, quite nerve wracking for a lot of people. Um, but the important thing to know is that, especially at Lancaster, we, we absolutely have all the support we need to help you make this, this next step um, to university. So before we get towards the, the student ambassador Q&A, I think it's important that you, you understand your priorities when you're looking at your choices. Um, it's super important that you know, you know, for example, are you looking for the biggest city? Are you looking for the best nightlife? Is there a particular hobby society? Are you looking for the best sporting facilities or are you more concerned with looking at the highest ranked university for your course or, or for the university in general? But only you can know the answer to this question. But no matter what it is and you know which university choices you're looking for, please just make sure that you're, you know, you're, you're absolutely sure that you're going to have an, you really love your course and that you, 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 know, you understand what it is you're looking for at this stage in the, the application process as that will set you off on, on the right track. Open days and HE fairs. So by being here today, you really already know where to start. But over the summer, we'll have plenty more coming up. Um, I'm going to show you the dates for the ones that are coming up at Lancaster. But um, online, especially through UCAS, you'll be able to find a huge list of all the ones that are taking place. Make sure you register in advance and you'll get all the information you need. But the UCAS website is a great place to start. But it's super important that you visit a university. It's fantastic that you're here today to, to ask questions online, but there's nothing really that comes close to going to a university in person and having a look around and explore to get a feel for the place. Uh, so these are our open days for 2022. So um, you can find this information online and you can actually register now. Um, but they'll, uh, our first one's coming up on the 2nd of July. Um, and then we'll be running throughout the summer and then to the 15th of October towards uh, the end of the year. OK, so that was an absolute whirlwind of information there. And I hope you're not too bamboozled by all of the information that I've given you. But we've come to probably what is the uh, the most important part of this presentation. And that's it's enough from re me, really. Um, but we're going to go to our student ambassador Q&A panel. So what we're going to do is ask um, Elish, Megan and Tori to say a quick introduction about themselves uh, to let you know what they're studying and most importantly, which college they're in. Um, and then we're going to go to some questions. So we're going to start with with Elish. Do you want to say a quick hello? Yeah, of course. Hopefully you can hear me all right and there's no technical issues. You're coming through. Yeah, um, great. Fine for me, yeah. <laughs> Double chatting after the morning we've had. Um, yep, yeah, so I'm Alish and I'm a third year chemical engineering student. I am in Bowling College, um, which is equally a, a very good college. I'm maybe not going to outright say it's it's the best one. I think all the colleges are pretty good, so I'm going to be a bit more diplomatic potentially than Johnny. Um, and I recently completed a placement year as part of my degree program too. And I've got one more year to go. So my course is a little bit longer because I'm on an integrated master's. And um, like Johnny mentioned, some courses can be different lengths. Fantastic, thank you, Elish. Um, Megan, over to you. 
Hiya, so I'm Megan and I'm a fourth year data science student and I did my undergrad at Lancaster as well in maths and during my undergrad I was part of County College which I will proudly say is one of the best and I think Tori's going to agree with me as well. <laughs> I'm noticing a little bit of a trend here. Um, Tori, over to you. Yeah, so I'm a fourth year um, at Lancaster, so I do um, environmental management, but I did my undergrad in geography and I am part of County College and I agree, best college on campus. I have to say that. I'm sorry, I'll be biased. <laughs> no shame in that at all. Um, I think, Tori, we're going we're gonna, to um, stick with you actually for a moment and I've got the first question that I'm going to ask you all. Um, so, Tori, the first question for you is, um, why did you choose Lancaster? You know, what, why was um, Lancaster University a, an option for you? I think there was a few main reasons why I picked Lancaster. I knew that I wanted to move away from home, so I came up from London. Um, I wanted to move away from family, just sort of be independent on my own. Um, and it was actually on one of the offer holder events um, that I spoke to some of my lecturers, and they were the people who convinced me in about five minutes, sat down, had a chat with me about the course, um, talked me through all the modules that I'd been studying. And I actually felt really supported, even though I wasn't a student here already. Um, and that was something I really liked because I was moving so far away from home. So I think that was my big reason. Um, the people in Lex were just really, really welcoming. Yeah, I, I felt, you know, very similar with, with my, my visit and experience to Lancaster. Um, how about for yourself, Megan? You know, why, why did you choose Lancaster? So, I mean, I looked around a bunch of different unis all over the UK and wasn't really set on either being close to home or far away from home. And I came up for the open day for Lancaster and just speaking to all of like the students and the lecturers and kind of anyone on the Looks like you're dropping in and out a little bit there, Megan. I'm not sure if you can hear me, Megan. I think what we'll do, um, Elish, I'm going to pass that question over to you. Um, why did you choose Lancaster? Um, so again, probably a variety of reasons, but I think for me, it was the, the flexibility of like the degrees. Um, I had no idea kind of what I wanted to do really. Um, and what I looked at initially was natural sciences, which let you do a lot of the subjects kind of combined so I could pursue kind of all my interests. And that actually led to me as soon as I joined, I just switched on to straight chemical engineering because I'd had a bit of a, an experience through natural sciences. And then there was that flexibility that even though I'd applied for a certain course, I came and was able to switch. So once you're in, especially, I think there's so much flexibility between the degree schemes at Lancaster that it does allow you to kind of take a bit of the stress off um, that you might come and you might not like exactly what you're doing, but you can switch within the schemes. And, and that was really useful for me. Also, there was a really great range of scholarships, which I think isn't really talked about massively, but obviously funding your studies can be tricky at times. Um, and Lancaster, especially when I was joining, offered a really great range of scholarships, which helped me with kind of accommodation costs and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and for the scholarships themselves, just for everyone's kind of general kind of information, um, a lot for most of them, you're automatically considered as well. Um, and we do have some really great scholarships. I'm sure for 2023, we'll, we'll announce them really probably over, over the um the coming months to so keep keep uh, uh, next year so keep an eye out for then um elish for yourself thinking about um top tips for looking at university you know what were your kind of priorities um when when you were considering your university choices yeah, that's so broad but i think you probably already mentioned it which is to actually go and see the university as much as you can read everything on a website once you arrive at any university i think it has a certain feel um, so I dragged my mum halfway up and down the country looking at <laughs> loads of different unis, but it was definitely worthwhile because some of the ones that I thought I'd love on paper, I just got to and I felt a bit lost and I, I didn't really like the atmosphere and it just didn't sit right. But coming to Lancaster, it was kind of the perfect size, having the campus um, uni feel. Um, so I think for me, just going and seeing like the vibe because a lot of a lot of the things you can get on the website but you can't soak up an atmosphere really for the website so coming and seeing it in person that was my biggest priority fantastic um uh, tori how about for yourself um if you had to give you know let, let's go for two top tips when you're thinking about um choosing your university or your course uh, what would those two tips be 
I think it is hard to narrow it down to two, but if I had to, I would say for your course, make sure it's something that you enjoy. Um, I think that's been my biggest thing since I've been at uni. There's been times where I've been writing essays and I've been like, don't know what's going on. Um, and having that like actual sort of sitting down and being like, I really do enjoy this and I, I like it really helps get you through those times. Um, and then I guess my top tip number two would be what Alicia said, like it's coming and seeing the place. Um, I know that sort of COVID's put uh, the breaks on that for a couple of years for people, but you guys are in the right place to do that now. Um, and I would say that's the best thing to do. Definitely go to an offer holder event if your unis have it as well, because that's where you get to talk to your lecturers and they are the ones who know what you're doing while you're at uni um, and have all the sort of the expertise and things that you'll want to know about when you're doing your studies. So I'd say those were my two. Fantastic. Um, Megan, for yourself, um, what's your favourite thing about Lancaster? I know I'm asking some really, really big questions here and it's not not easy to maybe fig- figure out the one thing, um, but it could be a place, it could be somewhere you like to go. But yeah, Megan, for yourself, what's your favourite thing about Lancaster? I feel like mine isn't necessarily like a physical thing. It's like the community feel of Lancaster. So I feel like anyone, as soon as kind of they get there, they whether it's through the colleges or through the fact it's like a smaller uni it's definitely got like a really nice community feel to it and if you're walking around campus you'll like almost always be bumping into people you know and that's just such a nice thing to like have on a daily basis is just kind of see people walking past give them a little wave rather than being in like a really big city university where you might not see someone you know on like kind of a daily basis. Yeah, absolutely. I found that in Furness College as well, with it being such a small um, college by comparison. So you're always seeing familiar faces, which is something that I really loved as well. Um, Elish, how about for yourself? What's your favourite thing about Lancaster? I think for me, it has to be kind of like the continued investment that the uni makes. Um, Having like visited like friends at other universities, Lancaster is kind of a set apart in how modern our facilities are and how much the uni is continuing to invest. So even from my first year there's been whole new buildings spring up um, the spine was completely revitalized my department are now currently getting another um, new building despite the fact we only had one in 2015 um, so I think constantly seeing the investment that we're making our facilities are pretty much world class and everything is so modern it's not like um, there's anything that's kind of been left behind everything is like the best that you could want um, to study in Absolutely. Um, Tori, for yourself, if you had to kind of describe the kind of um, the college system at Lancaster, um, what's the best way do you think you could describe that? I know I used Harry Potter houses earlier, um, but also could you also give us a bit of an insight in how you actually pick a college um, and even your accommodation as well? Yeah, so I think like colleges are basically like a family within the uni. That's how I would put it, because you sort of have a smaller group that you can go to. Each college has like its own mini support system with their college advisory teams um, and their JCRs, which is junior common rooms, um, as like student elected representatives and things. Um, so that's how I would sort of put it to start with. Um, when you're picking a college, I know I picked mine because of my accommodation. Um, so I knew I wanted a townhouse. So living with like 11 other people, which meant that I could only go for County and Grisdale just because that's where they're offered. Um, whereas if you go for like an ensuite, you have a little bit more of an option Um, because they tend to be in more colleges across campus so that's how I picked mine Um, but it also did have sort of the atmosphere and the like reputation of the college so I knew that county was the biggest college um, and I was quite shy when I came in first year and I thought I'll just throw myself in the deep end Um, and that's why I picked county and I think it's worked out quite well given that I'm talking on a live stream to students that are coming in Um, but that's sort of how I picked it. it I guess it depends on everyone else so I don't know if the other girls have had different experiences. I'll open that out to everyone if anyone wants to add anything to that. Um, I'll go first, maybe just because I am in a different college and hesitant that Meg might give the same answer for County. Um, I probably ended up in Boland because of similarly the accommodation offered. So Boland had standard accommodation, um, which was one of the more affordable options. And, and that's what I wanted when I joined. Um, I also kind of picked my college based on the location. So Boland is one of the really, really central colleges on campus. Um, We're also one of the founding colleges, along with Lonsdale. 
um, who are our rival college. Um, and I'm actually second gen in my family at Lancaster. So my brother's in Lonsdale and I'm in Boland. So that does make for some interesting conversations. But I think for me, it was more just the location. All the colleges offer very similar facilities and they all have the same support teams. They all do extras. I just looked at kind of where could I get to every lecture within five to ten minutes? And that's done me pretty well so far. Um, fantastic. Uh, the last question, um, Elish. So thinking about student support and, and going off to university, it's it's a really big step. Um, what was what's your, your experience of how um, Lancaster provides support? And, um, you know, how, how was how was Lancaster kind of helped you kind of make that jump to university? Yeah, definitely. It's it's a massive step. And I think obviously some of the girls have moved a lot further than maybe I have. Um, but I was still moving a good couple of hours away from home. And I think the first week um, that you're at Lancaster, all the colleges host their own kind of welcome week, um, which is similar to what other unis might call freshers week. But at Lancaster, welcome week's a bit more holistic in the sense it's not just about nights out. There's lots of sober events and different support events throughout that week that give you the opportunity to meet new people, try new sports. You meet your, your lecturers and it gives you kind of a nice kind of friendly way to be introduced to university life and to be introduced to new people without having started any of your academics so you're not kind of thrown right in at the deep end you get this steady kind of ramp up um, and that really helped I think to be introduced to new people in a way that wasn't all about you know totally going on nights out although there were those options I think it was just nice to speak to people with similar interests Fantastic. Well, thank you all for those really fantastic answers there. And I hope you've, um, for those of you who are watching, that's, you know, started some questions and I've seen some really great questions coming through in, in the, the Q&A as well. So please keep them coming across the rest of the day. Um, we're going to start wrapping up the first session for today. Um, and um, just to say, to echo really what our ambassadors have said and what I said before, there's nothing that beats coming to visit our campus um, across the summer. So, you know, those dates I mentioned before, we'd love to have you come and explore, have a look around Lancaster, and we'd love to have you there. We'll have the tea, coffee and biscuits ready for you. So enjoy the rest of your day. I really hope you've enjoyed this first session. We had a couple of technical hitches, but absolutely nothing that we can't navigate through. Um, so really just to bring the session to a close, um, have a fantastic time. You'll have um, the, the Unibuddy main landing page, which will be able to direct you to the next session. So we have two net, uh, groups of sessions coming up um, after this. Um, upcoming sessions are actually listed um, on the main page and you can actually favourite them with a little heart icon. Um, and that will add it to a personalised um, schedule for the rest of the day. And, and we'll put together an agenda for you. Our next sessions um, and our next group of talks, you have three to pick four. So either nine colleges, one home. Where are they now? Alumni stories or sports at Lancaster. And then later in the day, starting at 12, we'll have our second group of talks, including Discover Your Neighbourhood, um, Lancaster and Beyond, Student Clubs and Societies and Green Lancaster. All of our sessions are being recorded, so you will be able to um, have a uh, watch a copy of them on YouTube um, after today. And we also have a Q&A running all through the day as well, finishing um, earlier in the afternoon. Um, so don't go anywhere. Have a look through the sessions. Get them added to your agenda. Um, thank you very much for listening. It's been fantastic to speak to you all. And I wish you all the best of luck with your applications to university. Thank you.